Hello there guys and welcome, it is Niran here and today it's time for me to bring you episode number 15 of Science Korea here on F1 2015. Today our journey brings us to Sochi in Russia for what can only be described as, well, what is going to be an incredible race and I hope you go on to enjoy it. Nevertheless, I do apologise for how long it's been since the last episode of this. I have some mega news coming out tomorrow as you're what, actually no, potentially the same day, Saturday. Whatever day Saturday is in respect to what day this comes out, uh, that will explain how more videos will be coming out on F1 in the future. So uh, do bear in mind that. Uh, talking about the last race, the link to it will be in the description if you missed it. But before we get into what we see in this race, it is time to have a look at the qualifying report. Q1 would see Sebastian Vettel fastest in his Ferrari on option tyres. The German was fastest from his teammate Kimi Raikkonen, meanwhile at the other end of the spectrum, Max Verstappen was eliminated in 16th only at the first hurdle. Lewis Hamilton will return to the top of the timing sheets in the second session of the day, ahead of teammate Nico Rosberg. Pastor Maldonado made a rare appearance in Q3 at the expense of home favourite Daniel Kafiat and Carlos Sainz of Toro Rosso. But in the shootout it would once again be Lewis Hamilton taking pole at Sochi by six tenths of a second from the Ferrari of Sebastian Vettel. It was a bad day therefore for Nico Rosberg but a good day for Force India who saw Nico Hülkenberg and Sergio Perez both in the top ten. So reading from 10th upwards, it would be Nico Hülkenberg and Pastor Maldonado sharing row 10 with Daniel Ricciardo in front of a fantastic qualifying Sergio Perez. It was an all-finish row 3 with Raikkonen from Bottas, then Rosberg from Massa, but it was Lewis Hamilton who would take pole for the Russian Grand Prix. So a pretty poor qualifying for Sainz, for Toro Rosso in general really, Sainz down in 13th on the grid, Max Verstappen all the way down in 16th place after not getting out of Q1. There's time however to change that going into the race here on Sunday, Lewis Hamilton taking pole from Sebastian Vettel in the end, uh, rounding out the front row of the grid for Ferrari. Sunny sky, sunny conditions, unlike we saw at the start of the Japanese Grand Prix last time out, and we're looking at a one-stop strategy for Toro Rosso, but a few other teams might be going for a two-stopper. Sainz obviously with free choice of his starting tyre compound, having not made it into Q1, but will start on the option tyres instead of the more durable but slower prime tyres. So as you can see, the five lights are now on here in Russia, and we are underway. The home favourite, Danny Kvyat, lines up directly in front of Carlos Sainz with Felipe Nasr to his right-hand side. Not the greatest of starts, though, for the young Spaniard. He's got Marcus Ericsson there and a Lotus of Roman Grosjean all over the back of him. Marcus Ericsson actually breezing past there. The Renault Power Toro Rosso down towards turn two, and Diving up the inside of his teammate Daniel Kafiat and a Force India 2 past the Maldonado though, shaking him out wide. Poor exit there for Felipe Nazo, who actually got a massive slide on there and past the Maldonado and Ericsson going side by side through this long sweeping left hand corner. Daniel Kafiat's managed to pass both of them going up the inside, but in the end, Sainz is back where he started up in 13th place. He lost out to Marcus Ericsson, but has managed to pass Ericsson's uh, teammate Felipe Nazo and has moved. Hence, back up into 13th place. Roman Grosjean has managed to get past the Brazilian in the Sauber as well. Behind Grosjean, sh uh, showing some decent pace after a pretty disappointing qualifying, much like Max Verstappen as well in the other Toro Rosso. Pastor Maldonado, however, has slipped out of the points at the expense of the Russian home favourite, as I mentioned earlier, Daniel Kvyat, who will be looking to prove himself in front of his home crowd. Daniel Ricciardo, by the looks of things, is stuck up behind one of the Force Indias in front. Obviously, Ricciardo is battling science in the championship, as well as Felipe a Massa really, who is a little bit further up the road in the Williams. It seems as if the Williams is much better suited to this track than the Toro Rosso, but uh, that is not stopping Carlos Sainz from lunging up the inside of the Swede in the Sauber. That is Marcus Ericsson, and that promotes Sainz up into 12th position. But you can see Daniel Ricciardo stuck up behind. I think that is Sergio Perez, actually, who had a fantastic qualifying session for Force India. Nico Hülkenberg as well managed to get into the top 10. Uh, Hülkenberg is, is holding up Kvyat at the moment, but Perez, right at the front of this queue, is holding up Daniel Ricciardo, and that is where Sainz's target must be set um, if he wants to hold on to the back end of the Red Bull and perhaps uh, challenge Ricciardo later on in the race. We'll have to see how that one goes. 
Um, but obviously the Mercedes power unit here of Maldonado should be a lot quicker than Science. But with Science having a slipstream down towards turn two, he ducks out of the slipstream, tries to go up the inside down towards turn two as Ricardo is making a lunge move on Perez as well. Through goes Science up into 11th place. So he's gained two positions there in the first lap and a bit there, passing Maldonado and Marcus Ericsson too. Now moving later on to lap two, and Daniel Kafiat is the next target here for Science, who's uh, on somewhat of a recovery mission or a recovery drive. It has to be said, um, in order to sort of keep up with guys that he's battling with in the championship. He's, he's using the DRS, though, here onto lap three because, of course, that signals the enabling of DRS, does lap three. And uh, Science using it to his advantage to lunge up the inside of Daniel Kafiat down into turn two. Meanwhile, uh, the second DRS straight here is providing a chance for Daniel Ricciardo to finally make his move on Sergio Perez. The Renault power unit was not powerful enough to get him past with Slipstream alone, but with DRS now being enabled, Daniel Ricciardo, the Australian, has managed to clear that moving chicane that was Sergio Perez in the Force India, and he now moves up into seventh, I think it is. Uh, Science now with the DRS. He's got Perez and Hulkenberg actually making movements in front of him. Hulkenberg going up the inside there. Perez, Science, on, he outbreaks himself there. Does Science down into turn two. Yellow flags are out. One of the Force Indias has been turned around. I don't think Science was uh, directly culpable for that because I don't think he made contact with Perez. Fantastic, uh, fantastic reactions there. It's Nico Hulkenberg who is the lone Force India now. He survived the incident, but Sergio Perez is not. This is looking now from the back end of Sergio Perez. You can see Science out breaks himself and just misses the back end, and then Perez just spins afterwards. I don't know if that was with help from his teammate Hulkenberg or whether that was on his own. Fantastic reactions though there from Science to avoid smacking into the back of the Force India. In the end it did not matter though because Perez made contact with his teammate Nico Hulkenberg and spun round. Anyway, there you can see on board how close Science was to making contact not only with the back end of Perez but also with that barrier as well. Some fantastic reactions as I've said from Carlos Science to avoid Perez but in the end Perez then makes contact with his teammate. As you can see, ducking from left to right, Carlos Science making a tiny bit a contact as well there with a the side pod of Nico Hulkenberg but at the end of the second DRS straight on lap four he manages to get past the other force India of Nico Hulkenberg and the amount of action we have seen so far in this race already is quite astonishing on to lap six and Nico Hulkenberg is charging back at Carlos Sainz look at the closing speed there was there but there's been contact from someone else behind and it's Pastor Maldonado surprise surprise who's made contact there with Carlos Sainz but we didn't really look back and see what happened so I'm not entirely sure what did happen but it's lost Sainz positions there to Maldonado to Kofiat and also to Marcus Ericsson in the Sauber so we're back where we started on lap one and that's behind the Sauber of Marcus Ericsson this is the instant on board Pastor Maldonado he just outbraked him himself pretty much. Science was coming back onto the racing line. The Venezuelan completely outbreaked himself and smacked into the back of Science and that put him off the track. On to lap seven now and Science has got another recovery drive. Recovery drive volume two because he's now got to make his way back through this pack again and he's starting off with Marcus Ericsson yet again at the end of turn three. Lovely little move there. The Jean-Eric Verne if you like. Jean-Eric Verne in 2014 really liked that move and perhaps Carlos Sainz taking a leaf out of the Frenchman's book because he's trying it again on the next lap. Different time Target. Same result, Daniel Kofiat ends up behind Carlos Sainz and uh, the, the Spaniard, who's got a bit of um, tyre where it has to be said, has now got Pastor Maldonado and Nico Hulkenberg in front of him. Now whilst Nico Hulkenberg was providing Pastor Maldonado with DRS, uh, Carlos Sainz was finding it very difficult to find his way past the Lotus driver because to be honest with you, the car had a lot more squirt than Sainz's Toro Rosso. Now Hulkenberg however has dived into the pit lane for what I can only assume will be a two-stop strategy. Carlos Sainz, who's on a one-stopper, is aiming to pit on lap 12, so Hulkenberg must be going for a two-stopper. It now means Pastor Maldonado is much uh, closer, if you like, to uh, to touching distance uh, for Carlos Sainz in terms of making a move stick. On to lap nine, and this time Pastor Maldonado is diving into the pit lane to... Uh, uh, to to go for his first pit stop of the day. I can only assume again he's going for a two-stop strategy. We've now got Valtteri Bottas as well behind us in the Williams. He's made a pit stop as well as Felipe Massa and Kimi Raikkonen. And Bottas is now behind Carlos Sainz. Not sure how long that will uh, that will continue, for, however, because Sainz goes defensive to the inside. But Bottas in that superior straight-line speed Williams absolutely breezes past. He's already made a pit stop. He's not in the same race really as Carlos Sainz in this race. 
uh, if you like, if that makes any sense whatsoever. They're not really battling out on track. Bottas just on a different strategy. As you can see, however, Kimi Raikkonen has now joined the party. He goes to the inside. Daniel Kofia in the middle. And Raikkonen has just dived up the inside of Daniel Kofia and Carlos Sainz. That is a fantastic move from the Finn. As I said earlier, he's already pitted. Daniel Kofia was trying to make a move with the DRS on Carlos Sainz, whose tyres are starting to give up the ghost a little bit. But Kimi Raikkonen, with incredible closing speed, passing Verstappen, and then going for a double move on Daniel Kofia. Fiat and Carlos Sainz, they're just gobbling up Red Bull sponsored cars for breakfast is the Iceman at the moment. On to lap 11 though and as you can see Sainz there with hideous understeer going wide. Daniel Kofiat though trying to go up the inside down into this right hand corner and he makes the move stick and Daniel Kofiat though with a fairly unorthodox move it has to be said in terms of position out on, tr on, the, on the circuit has uh, managed to take 7th place off Carlos Sainz. Now these guys are really battling for position. These guys are on the same strategy same for Verstappen behind and the other Toro Rosso and the McLarens are of Alonso and Button behind. We'll have to see how Maldonado and Hulkenberg and the two Saubers also fit into this strategy because they're also on the two-stopper strategy. Roman Grosjean, who's been showing a lot of pace, is also on a two-stopper, so we'll have to see how he factors into this as well. Later on to lap 11, though, and Sainz is not having any of the move from Daniel Kvyat and, and fully stuffs his Toro Rosso right back up the inside of the Russian and his home Grand Prix. He's not letting the fans get to him. He's going to slap it right up the inside of Daniel Kvyat. However, fighting fire with fire as ever, Daniel Kvyat decides he's just going to uh, get one over uh, Carlos Sainz again and goes right around the outside down into turn two. And uh, that is the, the order that they stay in as they pit at the end of lap 12. Daniel Kofiat heading into his uh, Red Bull Renault garage and uh, further down the pit lane, Carlos Sainz heading into his Toro Rosso Renault garage. Fernando Alonso into the pit lane as well for McLaren Honda and Sainz has been held and that is because he's been, he's well, he's been let out behind Fernando Alonso in the McLaren Honda. So Sainz has lost the net, uh, net one position here. Uh, because Fernando Alonso is obviously on the same strategy and is now in front of the Spaniard. Uh, Marcus Ericsson, Naza, uh, Hulkenberg, Grosjean, Maldonado, they've all gone through on their two-stop strategy because they obviously got a pretty decent undercut on the guys that have just pitted now. Sergio Perez is completely out of it. He's way down in 18th, still behind Sainz already, uh, despite having made his uh, undercut pit stop. However, da uh, Carlos Sainz here is making a fantastic move around the outside of Fernando Alonso's McLaren Honda, and he's up into 16th place. That won't be 16th place, I don't think, once the pit stops have filled to that. But that's not stopping Sainz from charging up the inside now. Daniel Kofiat onto lap 13, and at the end of the second DRS straight, he he once again overtakes the Renault, the bigger brother car of Daniel Kvyat. Now it is time for the two stoppers to make their second pit stop of the day, of the afternoon, onto lap 14. Uh, Jensen Button is in the pit lane, as well as Max Verstappen, and Carlos Sainz has duly dispatched Button, and on exit of the pit lane, Max Verstappen does not stay in front of his Toro Rosso teammate. Sainz just about filtering out in front of his teammate. Back in McLaren land, and Fernando Alonso is giving it a good go round the outside here of his teammate Jensen Button. And that is a fantastic move if he pulls it off, and he has around the outside of his British teammate Fernando Alonso. It's all fun and games for McLaren there, making a very good move on his teammate. Yellow flags though out, uh, though out onto lap 15 down towards turn 2. Not entirely sure what that is. A replay here coming up of the two McLarens battling again. Jensen Bunn gets it all wrong and smacks into the back end of Alonso and then into the barrier for good measure as well. And that is his front wing gone and his race over. So Jensen Button there. Again, all fun and games till someone gets hurt. And unfortunately, the front end of Jensen Button's McLaren was in fact the individual that got hurt. Meanwhile, uh, more battles going on between uh, teammates now. And it's this time it's Max Verstappen. Uh, showing it to Carlos Sainz, going around the outside here on lap 16 at the end of the second DRS straight. Lovely little move there. It seemed as if uh, Sainz was a little bit um, cautious with the brakes, though. Uh, we'll have to see whether this is a, an actual battle for position. It seems like more cars are in the pit lane. Marcus Ericsson is one of those, and I think Hulkenberg and Grosjean are in as well. And up into 11th place, 10th and 11th respectively, go Max Verstappen and Sainz. Sainz is looking to uh, cause a reversal, however, of those uh, positions, because he's diving up the inside with the assistance of DRS down into turn two. Small lockup, but gets the job done. And Science is back up into 10th position. Grosjean and Hulkenberg have pitted. Next up, it is the turn of Maldonado. And who else? I think it's Felipe Nazar now who 
who pit on the next lap and that now promotes Sainz up into 8th place and Verstappen up into 9th place but once again Verstappen is looking to cause a bit of a roll, a roll reversal if you like and Verstappen goes right around the outside of Sainz Daniel Kafiat tries to make it 2 positions dropped for Carlos Sainz but can't make it stick around the outside through turn 2 so Sainz only loses the 1 position but I'm sure he'll have a little bit more to say about that into the second DRS zone and would you credit it he does indeed he's got the access of DRS here onto lap 18 he's in the slipstream of the young Dutchman and ducks out of it now to try and go up the inside down his slow right hander will he get the job done he gives him the hip and shoulder outside there does Carlos Sainz Max Verstappen sticking it up the inside however and there's the switchback now being played by Carlos Sainz he's going to try and get back up the inside into this off camber left hander and does indeed but some fantastic racing there between the two Toro Rosso teammates and uh, Carlos Sainz sticking it up the inside. We'll see this on board here with Max Verstappen. Look at how close that got. Verstappen having to actually turn out of the corner briefly. And uh, the switch back coming from Carlos Sainz gets better traction out of the corner. And then dives up the inside through the left-hander. And uh, leaves Max Verstappen out to dry. On to lap 21 now. And this battle is just not over. Hulkenberg and Pasta Maldonado have joined the party. Romain Grosjean's here as well to cause some issues. And Max Verstappen's got the DRS. He's going to try and go to the outside. Carlos Sainz doesn't want that. Carlos Sainz does not have a say in the matter, however, because Max Verstappen goes right around the outside. Daniel Kafiat getting a bad run now at a turn two. And look at that, Romain Grosjean going up the inside out of completely nowhere. So Romain Grosjean here on the newer tyres, because he's made a two-stop strategy work, has now managed to catch all of these guys and is just causing absolute havoc amongst everyone involved. And now the DRS being used by Carlos Sainz to try and go right around the outside yet again. Incredibly close between the two Toro Rossos yet again. Sainz this time holding it around the outside. Max Verstappen doesn't get a say in the matter. And up into eighth place. More hips and shoulders left, right and centre being flung about. Elbows being flung about left, right and centre. Getting a bit punchy. Roman Grosjean speaking of which is getting a bit punchy now down into turn two and he's gone right in between the two Toro Rosso's that's incredible up the inside of Verstappen but round the outside of Sainz who's going defensive now into this sweeping turn three and Grosjean has got the job done up into eighth place Sainz is trying to get back up the inside with this typical Jean-Éric Verne maneuver that he's tried and succeeded with two times in the race already this time however it does not work on Romain Grosjean who is uh, <laughs> Who, who knows what's coming. What a race this has been, by the way, so far. On to lap 22, and there's no signs of this dying down whatsoever, because Sainz, yet again, sticking it back to the Frenchman. Romain Grosjean goes right round the outside of him at the end of the second DRS straight. On to lap 23. Surprise, surprise. Roman Grosjean is getting back into the action, however, and breezing right around the outside of Carlos Sainz down into turn two. And that is eighth place yet again. But I'm sure Carlos Sainz, however, will not die down and will not let this slide. He's going to try and get in the slipstream round this sweeping left hander and try yet again up the inside down into turn four. Does he make it stick this time? No, he doesn't because Roman Grosjean hangs it around the outside. And uh, as we move now, yet again onto lap 24. This time it's Carlos Sainz who's behind going into the first DRS zone of the lap. And this time it's him who breezes past uh, his, his compatriot or his rival down into turn two. Carlos Sainz gets the job done but outbreaks himself completely through turn two. Roman Grosjean's now got a better run down through turn three. Goes to the inside of the Spaniard going through turn three. But yet again Sainz is going to continue and try his move up the inside down into turn four. Into turn four they go and he just about holds on to the position. This is just insane. Wheel to wheel battling. It's not going to get anyone squat in terms of more than eighth position in this race. But it's fantastic battling nonetheless. Roman Grosjean on circling like a shark down into this uh, this this right hander that's seen so much action already and he's trying to push uh, Carlos Sainz getting his elbows out and no, neither of them are happy so the hands being flung up left right and center by both Sainz and Grosjean Sainz not happy whatsoever and I think we'll be giving Grosjean the hip and shoulder at the next possible opportunity slight lock up there from the Frenchman as we go on to the second DRS straight here onto lap 25 Nico Hulkenberg has dispatched Max Verstappen like he's Amazon Prime meanwhile on lap 25 and Carlos Sainz going right around the outside of Roman Grosjean and up into 8th position. 
Uh, but of course, that's not the end of the drama, because Romain Grosjean is just going to fight back completely. And he's going to try and go right around the outside here through turn four. If he, if he makes that stick, he deserves a medal, and he has. So the medal is in the post to Romain Grosjean, because he's managed it around the outside. Sainz, however, locks up there. The inside uh, front there being locked up, going through that right-hander. But it's not done anything, because Grosjean has continued to make his move stick. And he goes up into eighth place. And now, Nico Hulkenberg is on the back of these guys. Felipe Nasa has also gone past Max Verstappen, so he's in 11th place. Verstappen's sinking like a stone through this classification, but Sainz is not giving up. He's giving it straight back to whoever is daring enough to give it to him, and he, he takes 8th place back. Valtteri Bottas has passed Daniel Ricciardo miles up the road. These guys have lost monumental amounts of time in battling, but on to the final lap of the race. Grosjean is not giving up. He's being squeezed to the inside, Nico Hulkenberg has a grandstand view of this battle. Grosjean there with the block pass, though, gets the job done. Lewis Hamilton, who we've not even talked about whatsoever in this race, has won the race here in Russia, as he always does in Sochi. But what a run Carlos Sainz here has got on Roman Grosjean. Will he make the move stick down into this right-hander? No, he won't. Grosjean gets better traction out of the right-hander, and that means Sainz now only has one opportunity to take Roman Grosjean back here, and that is down the second DRS straight. This race has been blown wide open due to the different strategies. I love these types of races where you've got two strategies going on and they interlink right at the end and it causes all sorts of havoc. There's been overtaking all over the shop throughout this race. Elbows being flung about, everyone getting punchy, not least Carlos Sainz and Roman Grosjean against each other. And now it comes down to this, the finale, DRS activated here by Carlos Sainz. He faints to the inside, goes to the outside purely because there's not enough space and it would cause an airplane crash if he tried to go up the inside. He squeezes Grosjean to the apex but just about gets round the outside. Will he hold on to the position in front of the Frenchman? It looks as if he will for now. Can Felipe Nasa take the final position in the points of Nico Hulkenberg? Does doesn't look as if he will, and it looks as if, barring a mistake, Carlos Sainz has got the better of this monumental scrap that he's had with Roman Grosjean all race long. He's got the better of Kofiat and Verstappen as well, who have been getting punchy throughout the 27 laps. At the end of the final 27th lap, though, it is Carlos Sainz who goes up towards the, uh, towards the wall and takes 8th place. And he will be happy with that. I don't think he's ever had to work more for an 8th position in his life. But it is 8th position nonetheless for the Toro Rosso driver. He beats Grosjean somehow in the end. Nico Hülkenberg takes the final place in the points in what was honestly just an absolutely astonishing race. Lewis Hamilton took the win in the end, uh, avoiding all sorts of drama and carnage that was going on behind, including incidents for Button and Sergio Perez as well during the race. Uh, I think Rosberg was second in front of Vettel, a uh, good race as well for Kimi Raikkonen in 4th, from Massa, Bottas and Ricardo. Then of course Sainz in 8th, Grosjean in 9th, Hülkenberg 10th, Nasa, then Kofi out his home Grand Prix only in 12th, from Maldonado and Verstappen, so Verstappen ended up dropping all the way down to 14th, and in a race that offered so much for Sergio Perez in his Force India, he is only down in 17th or 18th, I think it was. So yet again, Perez does not score any points. As you can see, here are the driver standings in the background. It's actually Lewis Hamilton out in front by 14 points over Nico Rosberg, his, his, uh, his championship a rival, I suppose, and of course his teammate as well. Still a good four races to go, so uh, an opportunity for Rosberg still to claim his title. Uh, Kimi Raikkonen now only 10 points clear of his teammate Sebastian Vettel, with Daniel Ricciardo in 5th. From Valtteri Bottas, Felipe Massa now leapfrogs Carlos Sainz up into 7th place in the championship, with Max Verstappen and Felipe Nasa keeping joint 9th and, well, 9th and 10th respectively. Daniel Kofiat is in 11th place, with Jensen Button in 12th. A point for Nico Hülkenberg keeps him in 13th place, from Fernando Alonso in 14th, and two points from Grosjean mean he's closer to taking, well, a top 10 finish, I suppose, by the end of the season. Uh, Ericsson and Maldonado are still 16th and 17th, with Sergio Perez still yet to score any points. Onto the Constructors' Championship, though. Mercedes still miles out in front from Williams, uh, sorry, from Ferrari, then Williams, Red Bull, Toro Rosso there, McLaren, Sauber, Force India, and Lotus there in a very good battle for 8th place, and Manor there in 10th still without a point. But I hope you have enjoyed one of the craziest races I've witnessed in terms of battling on this game. Do feel free to leave a like if you did enjoy. 50 likes, as always, on one of these uh, science career videos 
videos would be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you're new around here as well and comment about enjoying the video if you enjoyed it that much. Again, there'll be some massive news about F1 in the future. Uh, well, tomorrow to be precise, as I said earlier, and that will make sure that there'll be more F1 content in the future instead of just one per week. But nevertheless, uh, have a good day, enjoy yourselves, and goodbye.